Okay, so, there I was, making a video about myself and on my World Championship victory run, and I really enjoyed making the video, and the feedback was super positive, so I decided, hey, maybe I'll do this for a couple more games that I think are really impactful, that I really would like to cover and share with you guys, and um, there was so much positive feedback that I figured, yeah, let's do it. Now, before we start, I keep forgetting to ask, but I remember this time, Please subscribe. Please subscribe. We're getting close to 200k. I will do a Dracovish cosplay at 200k. So, um, just if, you, if you're if you watching this video and you want to support me during this time where everyone is stuck inside, you can go ahead and make sure you're subscribed to the channel. Okay, so, today's video is on Brendan Zhang and his 2013 Junior Division World Championships victory. victory. So, there's a lot to say about this match. Um, obviously, this is... A match that I was not a part of. Uh, I did not play in this match, um, nor am I really. I'm not a part of the story either. Like, um, but I've reached out to Brendan to try and get his perspective um, on the match, and so I'm gonna be kind of giving you guys some of the backstory as usual. And um, yeah, we'll just we'll just see what happens. So let's talk about Brendan first of all. So most of you are probably familiar with Aaron Zhang, and I'm sure that not all of you know that Aaron has a younger brother named Brendan who's actually a world champion. Um, so Aaron and Brendan have been playing Pokemon together for many years, um, and in 2013, Aaron got top four at the World Championships. He lost in top four. Uh, I'll probably cover that one maybe next. Um, and Brendan is in finals, so I'm setting the scene for you right now. So Brendan is in finals, and Aaron just got knocked out. Um, Brendan's backstory is that, so Brendan's in the junior division, so the way that Pokemon works is there's three different divisions, um, there's the junior division, which is generally 10 and under, there's the senior division, which is roughly 11 to 15, and then there's the master's division, which is everybody over 15, so Aaron was in the master's division, and Brendan is in the junior's division, waiting to play in finals, Brendan is not his first time in world's top cut, he actually made top four in 2011, and top four in 2012, and he lost both times in top four. So, not only has he already top cut twice, has he already been two, he's been two sets away twice. This time he's in final, so he's one set away. So, he's he's already been here twice. It's his last year in the junior division. Um, he's, you know, he's 10 years old. Um, and it's his last year in the juniors division. And he's already lost, in the, he's, he's top cut worlds twice and lost twice. So, in a lot of ways, there's a lot of pressure on Brendan here because... It's his last year in the juniors division, and he really wants to do well. Um, and, yeah, so, that's the first part of the story. Um, the other, the, the next part that we want to talk about is that Brendan, traditionally, I asked him this, this is, these are his words, um, not mine. He said, historically, um, I've never done that well at Nats and juniors, except in 2011, where I got second behind Henry Maxson, who is a snake, um, for those of you who know. I love, I love snake. Um, so, Brendan... Doesn't do well at Nationals in 2012. Doesn't do well at Nationals in 2013. He does well in 2011, but he doesn't win, right? Um, so, he's nervous. He's playing on a big stage. He does do well at Regionals, however. That's something that's worth noting. Brendan actually qualifies for the World Championships. This is the first year where they introduced Championship Points, which back then were very different than they are now. I think there were uh, there were either 8 or 16 invites in Juniors. Um, um, and so, Brendan manages to qualify... Through only regionals. He gets first at two regionals and gets second at a third. Which in... Nowadays, we, we've heard of juniors winning like 20 regionals. This is a very different era. This, this is like... This wasn't a time where, where people would go to every event. So to win two regionals and get second at a third is a big deal. Um, so he qualifies for Worlds through only regionals. Um, he goes to nationals. He doesn't do that well. Um... And, and he says, this is the first time that neither Aaron or I got the free trip to Worlds. So, we basically spent everything we made from regionals to get to Vancouver. So, um, and this this is before there was really money in Pokemon. There wasn't there wasn't money in Pokemon. Like, I won nationals twice. I got zero dollars, right? I got top eight at Worlds. I got nothing. I won regionals. I got second at regionals. No dollars, right? There were, we, this isn't like... I mean, even now, if you win a regional, you get like $3,000 at most, I think. Or maybe, yeah, 3000 which is it's just not bad at all. But it's not... That's not what we're talking about um, back in the day. We didn't have money for a long time. Any kind of money. Uh, you would win booster boxes and, and stuff like that. Um, so, yeah. I'm, I, so, Brennan says, um, so much pressure to perform after getting third in 2011 and 2012. Um, I feel like most people wanted to see me win and to do it with my entire family and most of my friends. Like, there was, like, everyone was here watching him. His, his family was here. Um, his closest friends are there. Um, and also, Top Cut is six Japanese kids. Brendan, and then 
Billa, Billa's younger sister. Um, <laughs> I didn't fact check that, but I'm, I, yeah, so that might be more or less wrong. But yeah, so basically, a lot of Japanese players. Brendan's the only American, and then Billa's sister's from Germany. Um, so that's the first part of this story. Now, what you're seeing in front of you is not actually the the battle video. It's actually the team report that Brendan wrote. So, Brendan is 10 years old, right? You might be, and, and also, Brendan is Aaron's younger brother. And you might be thinking, oh, Brendan and Aaron both got, like, you know, top four or better at Worlds. Um, you know, uh, maybe Aaron must have built Brendan's team for him. No. So, my one of my favorite parts of this story is that Brendan actually built his own team. And he writes this report, Google, Cybertron. Did you mean Babytron? <laughs> 2013 Junior Spoilers World Champion Report. So Brendan writes this great report. Um, it's really hard to read because I think this is like the archive version of Nugget Bridge, which is our community hub for a long time. Rest in peace. Um, yeah. Um, so Brendan, he, I just read this whole article before I started filming. Um, and he goes really in depth. He talks about a lot about, and keep in mind, Brendan is 10 years old. And he writes this really coherent, really intelligent report i'm gonna highlight some favorites of mine some or some things i thought were interesting he's worried about Berloom and he's worried about, he's thinking about the metagame he's not thinking about like oh i think this pokemon is strong on its own he's thinking what do i expect to play against and what is popular he's worried about Berloom, um and yeah he's 10 years old and he's, he's countering a metagame and he does it successfully so i have to use control a to read this sometimes because i don't want to get here it's hard to read um he talks about a starting process he talks about some of the other changes he reaches out to ray for help um, he switches up his, um, heat trim based on suggestions. He, he's paying attention. He sees, yes, Hydreigon, it's not very good. Changes it to Jellicent, uh, as a medical. Um, he's using Thunderous, but his team is really slow, so he changes it to Rotom Wash. Um, and he says, okay, my brother, Aaron Zhang, Cybertron, su uh, suggested a bulky Rotom Wash similar to the one he was using with will -Wisp. Since I already had my Citrus Berry and Cresselia, I went with the Chesto Resto variant, which Aaron had, uh, Citrus Berry. Um, so he likes that. Now... Brendan, from my understanding, builds a lot of these spreads himself, which is super cool. He talks about what he wants. He uses 220 HP to take less damage from sand. He uses enough special attack to Oko Lander's T. He puts the rest in defenses. Um, he also, there's some really intelligent stuff he does. So his Cresselia is 81 speed stat and does zero speed. Ice Beam Sunny Day, Helping Hand Trick Room. A lot of these things are just like so smart in what he does. So he chooses not to run a psychic move on Cresselia. He says that um, this Cresselia strangely doesn't have Psychic or Psyshock. I felt I didn't need it because Hitmontop, Conkleter, and any other fighting type Pokemon will lose to Cresselia's Ice Beam 101 anyway. This is before Knockoff was good, so he's right. Um, so yeah, he chooses not to run a Psychic move. Instead, throws both Sunny Day and Helping Hand. He obviously needs Trick Room and Ice Beam. Ice Beam for Landorus T back in the day and Thunderous, um, were really good. And having both Sunny Day and Helping Hand is a really smart call. And he runs Citrus Berry and Cresselia. He runs Lumberry Iron Fist Conkleter. So... This is really interesting to me because um, a lot of the Conkleter back in the day were Life Orb Hammer Arm. But what Brendan says is, um, if you noticed, I did not use a Life Orb plus Hammer Arm set. I really just liked having a bulky Pokemon which damages itself and can't heal back. So he says, I don't want to run Life Orb, um, Iron Fist, uh, Hammer Arm, Conkleder. Uh, instead, I'm going to run a bulky Conkleder with a lot of special defense investment and a Lumberry. Keep because he's worried about Berloom and Thunderous and, um, yeah. So, there's that. He runs Chesterberry, Rotom. He um, takes uh, Junpei. Junpei, oh, I haven't, heard, I haven't even thought about Junpei in forever. Um, yeah, Dragon Gem, Draco Meteor from Tim and Latios. Um, yeah. Uh, he says that. He does Fire Gem, Heatran. Here's the other, another really cool thing that Brendan does. So, Brendan runs 21 speed Ivy, Heatran. And most people are running 0 speed Ivy, Heatran because they want to underspeed other Heatran. So, I guess metagame talk really quickly. 2013 was a lot about um, Heatran and Conkleder and Tyranitar and these big Pokemon that just did a ton of damage and were really hard to deal with, like, defensively. So, Fire Gym Eruption Heatran gave you a Specs Eruption for a turn, and you'd pair it with Helping Hand or Sunny Day Cresselia, often Helping Hand, and just demolish Pokemon. Like, it was really, really, really dangerous. Um, Life Orb, Iron Fist, Hammer Arm, Conkleder would Oko's Pokemon like Rotom Wash. It would run an Ice Punch for Latios and Lander ST. Extremely hard to switch into. Um... Tyranitar would run Fling, Iron Ball, or just be very offensive in general. There's a lot of really hard hitters, and so, um, basically, whoever's teacher would slower would be able to Earth Power the other one in Trick Room. Brendan says, I don't care. I don't care about beating other Heatran. I actually want to be able to be faster than my Cresselia, so I can Sunny Day before I eruption in, heat in Trick Room, which is super cool. He says, with Sun Helping Hand at a Fire Gym, I could Oko a Cresselia. Now, that's actually kind of unheard of for a neutral attack, um... Yeah, he says, the only time I ever got a setup like this, I was minus a special attack from Snarl, but still almost okay to Sableye. Um, 
she, uh, inside trick room, I can outspeed an Adamant Renatar, and outside trick room, I can underspeed my Cresselia, er, and underspeed my Cresselia, allowing me to Sunny Day Erupt in the same turn. Um, he also chooses not to run the standard set that survives, um, Earthquake from Metagross 100% of the time, but instead it goes for Special Bulk. And the reason I'm going so in-depth on this is just that I think it's really interesting, the really specific things that Brendan chooses, because they're not super obvious, right? Like, you wouldn't think, uh, oh, like, you know, most people would think, oh, like, most people are surviving Adamant, you know, Metagross Earthquake, so... I'm going to survive Adamant Metagross Earthquake. Like, let's see. I mean, if other people are doing it, I'm sure it's good. Um, uh, but instead, Brendan really, I feel like he really, he shows that he's really thought about every detail of his team. Um, and it's just, the, like, it all comes together so nicely. Like, I really like this team. He says Jellicent was the least used Pokemon. Um, he added it just because he wanted a second Trick or Setter. Uh, he, he thought it like Walled Rain. Um, he runs Water Absorb because he thinks he could prediction, make predictions with it. He takes um, Gavin Michaels as Eevee Spread. I don't think there's anything that interesting here. And then. Brendan goes even further, and he adds a Pokemon that hasn't been used at all, right? Escavalier won the World Championships in 2011, and actually, you know what? There might have been some Escavalier usage, but it was few and far between, if that. Like, I, I don't remember seeing almost any successful teams with Escavalier, because again, Heatran and Conkildur are really big, right? Heatran and Conkildur are really big, and uh, both those Pokemon have pretty positive matchups against Escavalier. But Brendan makes a call, and he says, I'm going to bring Choice Band Escavalier. Some interesting things about this... He runs Protect on his Choice Bandus Cavalier because he figures he doesn't need the coverage moves. Um, this might even be before Drill Run, um, but he says, you know, maybe he can bluff people into um, into attacking it, or, you know, he can, he can you know, set Trick Room up while he protects, which I think he says he, he uses Protect once in the whole tournament, um, but it helps win in the game, you can see here. Um, he also runs both Mega Hammer Horn and X-Scissor, which I really respect because... Um, uh, he doesn't want to miss Megahorn and lose games on missing Megahorn, so, yeah. Um, he says that Scavalier was the best Pokemon on the team. He originally had Heracross, uh, but one day Aaron beat me with his world's team, and I got worried. Um, he was testing Choice Band Metagross. I tested at least 10 battles with my Metagross before I said, Metagross is so bad. <laughs> I really just like that Metagross can't ditch out incredibly powerful moves. Then I got the idea of Choice Band Scavalier. I didn't take it seriously, and I was about to change the Pokemon, but the more battles I won with it, the more I liked it and took it seriously. Um, it has Protect, I talked about this, he talked to Aaron Trailer and J-Rank and ISS, Edward Fan. Um, uh, I only use Protect once to beat the attack of Scavalier, so I get set up Trick Room, but it helped me win the game. Um, doesn't want to miss Megahorn. How playing in from Cresselia with X-Scissor got me most of the KOs I needed. Um, and he also runs Adamant 31 speed to outspeed minimum speed Amoongus and still be slower than Conkildur. This is because against a rain team with Amoongus, I could set up, I could Sunny Day and Megahorn the Amoongus, getting rid of the biggest threat right away. Uh, this may not seem like a big deal, but in testing, I found that if I waste my turn sleeping, my team can't win because I needed the proper setup to win. I was able to showcase my me outspeeding an Amoongus on TV in the fourth round. This part, this team synergy, I'm going to skip over a little bit, except for... Um, he talks about a couple tricks that he can do. Let's see. Um, so, the, I, I want to, so this is the last section I'm going to showcase, this notes in the team section. Um... But I think it's really interesting because Brendan goes in depth. Like, he, she just shows how much he's thought about um, the team and about how he wants to play this. So, yeah. So, basically, um, he says he doesn't get to show off everything. But here are some things that he, he thought were interesting. So, Eruption Heatron is really powerful, but not as much when I did not have Cresselia to set up Sun or Helping Hand. Since I always had either Cresselia or Jellicent, I found the next best way to increase my Heatron's power was to actually will o myself, either with uh, Jellicent or Rotom Wash. I also had two Trick Rumors and had the ability to pull off the famous Double Trick Room. Uh, my last trick was hydro pumping my own Jellicent with Hurtum <laughs> Wash to heal immediately. And of course, my Heatran was designed to so Cresselia could Sunny Day first and trick him before Heatran could erupt. Just like Aaron's team, we both wanted to use the pure strength of Conkleder and Heatran with Cresselia and Rotom W as the support cast. I decided to make a few metagame calls and use Choice Bandit Scavalier and Jellicent while he used Landorus T and Tyranitar. My team relied on trick room more, but that doesn't mean I had to set up trick room to win. I often would just go for an attack and get KOs since my team was pretty bulky. To address Taunt, Taunt was a really common move with Juniors since it shut down teams like mine. I actually really liked it when my opponent would bring Thunderous to taunt me, and I often bring this by Ice Beaming the Thunderous, um, and that's all I want to think I want to say about this. He goes into the tournament report. He talks a little bit about the pre-finals, which are here. Aaron lost in top four, and I really wanted to win. I found my opponent was Fuku Naka uh, Nakamichi, who was also my sixth round opponent. I knew her old team already, except what kind of Thunderous she was using. Um... I thought about it, and the only way she could effectively stop my setup was if she led Thunderous and Weavile. So there's something really really niche here that I, I don't know if it's intentional or not, um, but Brendan, like, he makes it sound like he prepared for finals on his own, which honestly, given the rest of this report, I would believe. Like, I would believe that he didn't even, like, have help. He probably, I mean, surely Aaron helped him, and I'm sure other people helped him too. Um, yeah. Uh, there's also this really cute. So he says, before we got set up, um, 
or let's study. I slept early and woke pr pretty early too. Before we got set up, I saw there were a lot of people, but I was fine with it and kept calm. Also, another cool thing was that I wore headphones while playing. It was really cool, and I finally got to experience it because of my lacking nationals performance. So that was this was like the era before headphones were super common. So, yeah, I'm actually just curious if he beats. Let's see, top records uh, six. So, so he beats. Okay, he does beat her in Swiss. He beats Fuku in Swiss. Um. <laughs> Yeah, she has a cool team as well. She has Weavile and Verizion. Um, but yeah, okay, I, I just want to stress one more time that Brendan is 10 years old. This is a 10-year-old kid you're reading talking about extremely high-level Pokemon. Like, this, this is like... It's crazy to me to think that Brendan... He's 10! He's 10! Like, Junior Division is like... It doesn't like... It, they don't always get a lot of credit because they're so young, but when I read stuff like this, I'm just like... At the time... And still, but especially at the time, like, we ever, like, most people unironically believed that Brendan as a junior was better than most masters. This is still true, but it's not, it's less crazy because, you know, he is a master now. Um, but he's 10 years old and he's writing this stuff. And he, like, he, I mean, you know, I, I, I think, I think the play will speak for itself. So, um, I'm just gonna get set up here. But yeah. And then we'll go, we'll go one more time over the backstory. And I don't know if you guys are interested in me kind of doing this team report stuff. Um, let me just fix this because I messed up things a little bit. Um, but I, I think it's really interesting to read Brendan's report and, and hear what he had to say about the team and, and to give you guys the context for the team you're about to watch as well. So, um, okay, I think that's that. I think we should be pretty much good to go, um, unless I'm forgetting something. But, um, yeah, so once again, let's, let's just cover the setup one more time before I get really into this match and we can start watching it. Um, Brendan is... It's his last tournament in juniors. After this, he's going to be a master, and so it's his last game of Pokemon that he has to play in juniors. His brother just lost in top four. Um, I asked Brendan about it, and I was like, hey, did Aaron, like, did Aaron getting top four have anything to do with how you felt? And he said, it definitely made me want to win more. I was like, at least one of us has to win if, if we made it that far. So I like that. Um, so he's on the big stage, and you might, like, Brendan has technically been on the big stage before, but it feels different this time, I think. Um, I'm not sure if we even had... No, we didn't have headphones in 2012 because we weren't streamed in 2012. Or, like, we technically were, but not really. Um, so, Brendan, like, it's his first time probably playing on, a st like, a big stream setup. Because, yeah, st the streaming started at 2013 Nationals. That was the first time we had, like, a legitimate stream with Scott and Evan. Um, and so, first time being streamed. His third time in Top Cut, and he's lost twice. And just... I don't know if everyone's experience is the same, but my experience... Being in the finals the first time versus the second time, I was much more nervous the second time because, like, the first time you feel invincible and you're like, oh, I made it this far, like, I'm so good, like, this is my story, I'm the main character, like, I'm gonna win, right? I'm the main character, like, of course I'm gonna win. And then, like, the second time you realize that you're mortal and you realize you can lose and it might not be your story after all, you might be a side character in somebody else's story, you might be the villain in someone else's story. Um, and so... Yeah, because I don't know. At least for me, I, I realized I was like, wait, I'm I'm immortal. Like this might not be my this might not be my story. Um, and so the second time I was much more nervous than the first. Although I played worse than the first, so I don't know. Um, but yeah, so Brendan, he's been he's been in Top Cup before, and um, there's also kind of, in my opinion, a weird dynamic where when you beat somebody and like a, a match that doesn't matter as much, like Brendan and um, his opponent were both five and zero going into the last round of Swiss. And now, like, you, it's like, I beat you when it didn't count, but now it, like, really counts, right? They were both going to top cut. Um, but now, one of them is going to be world champion. So, that's at play. His whole family, his family's watching him. All his friends are here. He, there's a huge crowd. And he, know, he knows he's the favorite, which is a lot of pressure, right? He also, like I said, it's his last tournament in juniors. Um, and, okay, to be fair, to be clear... Well, actually, wait, let me finish setting up. Okay. Um, last tournament in juniors... All his friends are watching. First time being, like, streamed on a big stage like this. He's got to wear headphones. He's not, like... This is this is all, like, relatively new for him. He's got the Masters watching him. He's got, like, the whole world of Pokemon is focused on this match right now. Um, and he, he, he wants this so badly, and he wants to be the world champion. And he knows Senior Division is harder. Masters Division is harder. I mean, granted, Brendan's amazing. And so, you know, I, th I don't think to anybody else, like, we, would, we were surprised to see him do well in, in the other divisions. But, you know, maybe Brendan feels like... He, maybe he doesn't have what it takes in seniors and masters. He 100% does, but you know, like, he's 10 years old. Like, he's 10 and he's got to play with all this pressure. Like, this is pressure that masters crumble under, right? That experienced players crumble under. And Brendan is 10 years old and he's fighting for his dream. And it's all up to him. It's all in, in his and his Pokemon's hands. Now, I realize now that I've, said, I've spoken all this that I am being very biased, right? I'm, I'm obviously speaking from the perspective of Brendan. 
and I do apologize for that. Um, Brendan is honestly, Brendan is like a younger brother to me. I've known him for so long. Um, since 2011, Brendan was there at my first regional win with Aaron. It was me, Aaron and Brendan who won. So he like Aaron, um, he and I have known each other, you know, I've known the, I've known him since he was like seven or six, probably eight, seven or eight. Right. Um, and you know, 10 years later, we're still, we're still friends. Like I didn't message Aaron to be like, Hey Aaron, can you ask Brendan this? I was like, Hey Brendan, tell me about this. You know, um, Brendan is also a really relevant part of my world's journey because Brendan is the third person who, uh, who worked on the world's team with Marcus and I, it was me and Marcus built kind of the baseline. And then Brendan came in for the tweaks. Right. And Brendan also top cut that tournament. So Brendan is a good friend of mine. Like I said, he's, he's one of the few people who I honestly consider like a younger brother to me. Um, I don't know if he feels the same way, but, uh, I just told the whole internet. So might be, um, <laughs> um, but yeah, so obviously I'm going to be biased and I'm not going to pretend that right. Also, Brendan spoilers, he won. So, um, so, you know, like there's a bit of, of narrative, um, of narrative bias here, but you know, this is just, this is just how I, how I perceive it. I'm kind of telling you this from my perspective. So of course there are with any story, there are two sides. I'm just giving you the part that I know and the part that I knew to ask about. Um, but yeah, so of course I do, I ideally, I would guess I would be totally unbiased, but, um, with Brendan, I just, I'm just not going to be unbiased. So we're, I'm rooting for Brendan. I don't care. You guys. Are. We can watch this intro video video as well turn this down a little because this is gonna be nostalgic for me as well this is the this was for a while my worst world's performance this is my second worst world's performance ever oh wait no third now let's go wolf man gen gen 7 was bad for me wasn't it i, I actually love these were so, I, I wanted you to know that like the, the feeling of being in the crowd and waiting for the tournament or the final start and watching like either the recap or the intro video like I'm feeling nervous now. Like it's, I'm, it's like it causes a reaction in my body. It's, I think that was a nosh. <laughs> Let's see. Let's see if I recognize people. Are. TCG players. That's Ray. That might have been Mateo. I couldn't tell. Deli Bird. Let's go. Oh, Nick. Oh, Nick. <laughs> Oh, I have to tell you guys the story of Nick McCord someday. Somebody remind me. Someone's going to have to remind me to talk about Nick McCord, an actual legend. Kids, kids. Oh, yeah, the EV dance. <laughs> Somebody's waving. That's not me, but it kind of looks like me. More EVs. That's Paul. <laughs> I saw you, Paul. <laughs> I hope you're watching this. World's trophies. Ooh, that trophy case looks nice. Trading card. Meowth. Oh, yeah, Zot too. <laughs> A good year for sea smugs. Xerneas. Celio. This kind of slaps. TCG players. There's, oh wait, that's Randy. Oh, well, Randy, I saw you. Shout out, Randy. Man, this takes me back. The production value on these has also increased. Pokemon Center stop. They're just good, just keep going. Yeah, so this is the crowd that Brendan is like. It's probably even bigger than this that Brendan has to deal with. Oh, is this Nick's Last Worlds? Oh, my heart. Oh, I think this was Nick's Last Worlds. That feels bad. I wasn't. I didn't want to hear that. I didn't want to realize that. That's uh, Japan. <laughs> All right, cool. So I think that there's a lot of kind of, uh, well, let's hear what Evan Scott to say, actually. Good morning, everybody, and welcome to this uh, Championship Sunday at the 2013 Pokemon World Championships. My name is Evan Pladlat. I'm joined here by my good Evan friend Plad. Scott Glaza. Scott, we've had a couple of amazing days of Pokemon. We're not going to watch all of the intro, the LCQ on Friday. We but I do want to hear what these guys have Swiss to say. Yesterday so we'll just give it a second. Cut, and now we're here for some great finals matches. Junior, senior, and masters finals all coming up today. Uh, Talk about Brandon. In for an, um, great, some great rounds, all great games. They should put on a great show for everyone. Yeah, the top going up against Fuko Nakamichi. Okay. Both of these trainers uh, How long so into strong. A match? Brendan went undefeated in Swiss, and okay. Fuko only lost to Brendan in the Swiss match already. Uh, it should be a great match there. Uh, Brendan, one of the more popular players from the United States of America. He's won tons of regionals, uh, two just this year. Uh, traditionally, you know, the big favorite in all of the American Juniors events. Uh, this is his last year in Juniors, mm -hmm. so it's really important to him to finally get that world's victory he hasn't been able to secure. Mm -hmm. uh, he's been in the top four twice, 
So we'll see if he can get it done this year. Yeah, never quite able to close that one out. This might just be his year. He's already made it to the finals. Well, but listen he will a little be up longer. Against a very tough trainer in Fuko Nakamichi. And sorry, the reason why I want to listen to this is because, like, I want to make sure that the narrative that I'm telling you guys is, like, I, I want to fact check myself or, you know, as much as I can because the commentators before the match and the other matches have really done a good job of laying down the um, kind of the groundwork and, and the, the general perception of the match. And so even though I know this isn't the game itself, I do think it's kind of important to hear what, what Evan and Scott are, are saying about um, are saying about the match, if that makes sense. Definitely going to be an exciting matchup here. I think we looked through the statistics earlier and Brendan had a, a 1.3 average finish at regionals this year. <laughs> Only getting second once. <laughs> yeah. I, I can't think of anyone outside of maybe uh, Ray Rizzo having sort of an equivalent schedule. I mean, they're just ridiculous. I mean, winning two regionals in one year and then making it to the finals. That was a big deal time. back then. I that was a huge deal back then. I can't think of anyone in any age division who's managed to do that all in yeah. one season before. Yeah. Like uh, Scott says, that was a huge deal. Shows you how good he is and how good the show of his belt is. It's not, it's not like it is nowadays. Uh, one of the better finals you could hope for. Yeah, definitely looking forward to that Because people didn't one. go to 20 Up regionals back in the day. senior bracket. <laughs> go ahead and take a look at who will be competing okay, for the care. title I mean, we do here. Care. We have Hayden McTavish from the United That's States actually, of America. Um, Up against Ryosuke Kosuge from the... All of these trainers going through off the bin top Brendan? cut in numerous. opponent is so good. You know, it's the world champion round. Like, you can't really get in a more desperate situation than that. You're down 1-0. You're losing in the second game. Oh, let's you, hear, hey, let me show you guys, Nick. I'm going to kick it down to my good friend Nick McCord let's on go, Nick. stage to introduce our first battle. Pop. Thanks, guys. Great job oh. casting. We're really all enjoying it. I miss well, Nick. Well, like you said, we've got two formidable opponents battling for the title of world champion. Ladies and gentlemen, in the junior division from the United States. Oh, I miss Brandon Nick. Sang. Look at how small Brendan is. Are they going to show him? They're not going to show him. Camera work was, was less uh, impressive back in the day. And his opponent from Japan, Fuko Nakamichi. We're going to listen to all of Nick. Let's go, Nick. Trainers, you may begin. <laughs> okay, well, I guess that's all he has to say. Cut the camera! <laughs> there we go. Let's see. Oh, we're also going to have some nice Aaron Zeng shots. I'm here somewhere, but I don't know where. Where's Aaron? There's Tom. Hey, I see Tom. I might be in Fuego, but I'm not sure. Okay, let's see. We can go ahead and skip. Using his team of Conkelder, Jellicent, Rizzo, All right, we're starting. Heatran, 30 minutes Marcella, into the video, we're starting. That's better than my finals. And Fuko Nakamichi will be using her team of Kingdra, Politoed, Thunderous, Scizor, Weavile, and Verizian. Not a Pokemon that we've seen. A yeah, Verizian and Weavile were weird Weavile picks. There. I was going to say, really interesting Pokemon choices here. Uh, there's been some great variety this year, um, showing how many viable Pokemon there are in the game. And Weevil and Verizian are both really interesting choices. Mm -hmm. I, I can't remember the last time I've seen them this deep in a tournament. So it I'm was really probably beat up Weavile. Do here. It was uh, definitely beat up really Weavile. Well so far, only losing to Brendan, like you mentioned. So she clearly knows what to do with them. She must have a really interesting plan here. So I'm excited to see what it is. That's actually an interesting part of the story as well, which is that like Fugo only no only lost to Brendan. She beat everybody else. So yeah, like Weavile is definitely yeah. one of those interesting Pokemon because it is able. To here we go. Oh, look, look at Brendan. But also, it's very frail. So if it can't get the damage off quickly, then it's not going to be able to... All right, to let's see. Let's see. Let's see. We're starting. Okay, so the leads. And here we are in the battle. Brendan, remember, the I think he says he was only worried about Weavile Thunderous lead. Japan, which is what Fugo leads. Okay. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. Brendan 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 leads with his defensive Pokemon. States of America, Cresselia and Rotom and Wash. So in this situation, obviously, Weavile threatens Fake Out. Thunderous threatens Taunt. And you can Thunder Wave electric type Pokemon back in the day. So... We saw this from his brother yesterday. <laughs> similar Pokemon. I mean, as you expect from a brother duo, they do work together in building their teams. So yeah, so it, it, it's funny that Scott says that because it actually sounds like they didn't work together. Like they didn't really work that much together. Although I don't know, maybe they did. Um, this kind of hard to tell exactly how much. Brother Aaron's Rotom failed and hit a few attacks this time. Yeah, yeah so Willow is the Weavile is a good play. I think Brendan said he. I know he like Brendan and like. So Brendan has to think about the long game, right? On the one hand, he wants to get a burn on a, on the Weavile. Um, on the other hand, the obvious play, I think, from Fuko is fake out into Rotom and taunt into Cresselia. Because Brendan really wants Trick Room up and Fuko really does not want Trick Room to go up. So for that reason, I think that if you're Brendan, you probably... I Brendan mentioned in the report, but he probably is going to expect a taunt here. So he's most likely going to Ice Beam that Thunderous since it's his only attacking move. Um, 
And, um, yeah, with Rotom, Brendan has to make a choice between Thunderbolting the, the, the Thunderous to get some damage off or burning the Weavile. Thunderous is out on the field also. But let's see what happens. This time, with a little bit more offensive pressure 20-minute timer in this Weavile. game. Weavile. But the animation um, the drops pressure coming oh, that's, out as well that's a really cute hat. She's got Fatini. <laughs> swagger risk coming out from that Thunderous. Uh, very heavy support on both sides, actually. As yeah, Evan's right. There's a lot, a lot of the already. defensive Pokemon. I mean, not, not, not Weavile, but the other three, yeah. We do have the Dark-type... Weevil against the Psychic type Cresselia here, but it comes really out. should be in Rotom. Rotom too much. Yep. Yep. Weavile is going to go ahead and make sure that that Rotom doesn't get a chance damage. to yep. attack comes and out. uses the fake out on it. While the Thunderous is going to go. Oh, there's only one finger. Back to make the day. sure that Cresselia is unable to use any non-attacking moves, sort of a, like a Trick Room or a Rest Rotom flinches. or something like that. Rotom does. So Thunderous, like you guys might not think of Thunderous as very bulky, but especially in this generation and this year specifically, it felt Celia very bulky. Celia does not fall for the bait. Brandon pops off. Let's go. The ice beam on that Thunderous. This should like do make. And oh, it's the Yachty Berry. This is like 20%, berry, 15%. Which will weaken the damage of that ice type. Okay, so no healing there, item. Making like sure that Cresselia is not doing any damage no whatsoever. I forgot how slow the That's animation was back in the day. That, uh, Thunder is there. Okay, so now think... let's take let's take stock. So Brendan probably wants to double the Thunderous here, or he can go for a burn on the Weavile. The downside of trying to Willowist the Weavile is one, you can miss, and two, um, you could get taunted on your Rotom. So Brendan has to make a choice because in the end he really wants Thunderous gone, but also Thunderous isn't exerting that much offensive pressure. So in theory, you could like ice beam this turn and then double it next turn if you thought you were gonna get thunderbolted or thunder wave. It's almost nothing from the um, ice beam. The berry helps. Man, thunder wave, thunder is so I forgot how broken thunder wave thunder is. Thunder wave resistant to special attack. So Brendan's gonna have to take that in, or keep that in mind. He's got two special attackers out right now, so he may want to consider a switch here. Yeah, it looks. I mean, the Weavile is still a, a nice juicy target, but it does put some. Oh, pressure Thunder is swagger as well. That's the yeah, other option, man. Yeah, it feels like Fuku has a lot of options here. She can swagger, you know, she can thunder wave, she can taunt, she can thunderbolt. Celia. She has a lot of options in this position. Rotom isn't as much of an she could also, in theory, you know, switch Thunderous into Verizion and beat up if she has that. But that's since Brendan's almost certainly ice beaming that slot. Weave a little bit. Um, like I mentioned before, Brendan could just conkle as well as Celia if he wanted. Like he could thunderbolt the Weavile with just conkle her, but it feels like thunderbolt, which will do a lot. Because he doesn't he really needs like Conkleder not take damage, and Cresselia is so bulky that yeah. even Dark Moon's going to be a, a, tough a tough road for Weavile. You know, it usually is. That's why we haven't seen it in as many <laughs> I like battles as some of these other Pokemon like Thunderous or Cresselia. Okay, so usually holds the focus time. Well, I'm actually, blocking the, I'm least, blocking the, you know, take the out one, uh, one hit there. Players. But it is going to go with the Ice Shard, Ice Shard onto that Rotom. Okay. It's going to be not very so effective against the Water-type Rotom Washing Machine. Does get the priority off, and the Thunder, Thunder wave. wave comes out Ooh. from that Thunderous Ooh, that boy. will paralyze that Rotom Wash. Uh, flashbacks to Aaron's match yesterday. <laughs> They're doing Aaron so dirty. <laughs> Alright, so I don't know why she I started there. Um, she might have been trying to cover speed, a switch, but Rotom gets the Thunderbolt off. off. And it is going to continue to target that Okay, so Brendan does. Incarnate form oh, there. This is Thunderbolt is going to Ooh, deal not that much damage, Thunderbolt but gets its own paralysis. So here we go. Welcome back in the day, everybody. We could we could paralyze electric types, and you see it here first. Back, uh, but it's going to live another ice beam. So the thunder wave on the road I really like that play from back Brendan. Again. The Brendan reason that play was so good. To let that thunderous stick. You can see that Brendan knows that he needs two hits to KO. Like he needs two turns in order to KO this this thunderous. So what he does is he goes for ice beam and thunderbolt, putting thunderous in range of another one because I think that next turn. Taunt will wear off. So this turn, he has a vet because of that move he just did. He now has a very safe Willowisp into Weavile, which might miss, sure. Uh, but you don't really have anything better to do unless you want a Thunder Thunderbolt, which or Hydro Pump, which is fine too. Uh, but I'd say Willowisp for Thunderbolt into Weavile, and then Ice Beam into Thunderous. And by the way, Confusion is fifty percent in this generation, so it's really scary. Like um, around. So and, and then next turn, you might be able to set up a trick room with your Cresselia. Uh, in, in so keep in mind, even though uh, Brendan's yeah, Pokemon are oops, that's not what I wanted. How do I always do this? Yesterday in the Masters Division, Thunderous just stu um, survived for many turns. It was able to really be um, disruptive. And Brendan doesn't seem to want Even though Brendan's led like super defensive Pokemon, you can see that he's actually almost KO'd Thunderous. And in return, all he's taken is a fake out and an Ice Shard the and a Thunder Wave. Which frankly isn't uh, terrible. And a taunt. But Grisselia is still very healthy. Um, which is like, again, if Brendan gets Trick Room up, this game is going to get uh, much easier Not a very for effective him. turn for uh, Fuko there. Yeah, and crucially, uh, Brendan is ignoring. I wonder why she is not afraid of the. Because nothing on Brendan's team was weak to it, I think. I mean, Maybe she's just ran out of time because it looked like she was running low on time. Um, so even if I think you have, have sixty second move time in this game, from that this Weavile, probably going to be sitting pretty healthy, even even still. Now, daring of him to ignore it though, I'm kind of tempting fate a little bit, ignoring a dark type Pokemon with the Psychic type out, especially because 
The most common dark type attack for Weevil is Night Slash, a move that has a boosted critical hit rate. So just ignoring yeah. it. Crits are double damage. There's a lot of opportunity yeah, for things to go wrong. But it's working out well for him so far. He's with a little bit of a lead He's, here. Uh, she switches, actually. She switches Thunder is out. She's going to bounce back. Does not want know to that be name. giving out any free KOs there. Scizor. And Ooh, Scizor now okay, that was a field. And you have oh. to imagine that Cresselia is going okay, to be so, Okay, so let's talk about what happened. So Weevil was really able to fake out Night Slash, or fake out um, Ice Shard and up beat up. Um, so that Thunderbolt Paralysis is actually a big deal right now because, um, thanks to the Paralysis, Beat Up is only going to hit three times instead of four. Uh, I also really agree with Fuku's decision to switch Thunderous out there. That was a really smart play because, you know, the Brendan's probably just hitting it with Ice Beam, so Scissor can come in pretty freely onto the Ice Beam. Um, and Rotom Wash is most likely targeting, um... Targeting your Caesar, uh, tar targeting your Weavile, excuse me, and so this allows her even if, like, this allows her to still have KO pressure on the uh, on the Cresselia this upcoming turn, even if Taunt wears off. A little bit afraid now as Beat Up comes out from that Weavile, not the Night Slash. And actually, the fact that she got damage. paralyzed actually I think helps because now Cresselia can be bug bitten because it would have more HP if it got hit one more time, most likely. It depends on if it procs Citrus Berry, but assuming Citrus Berry would activate there, like, Cresselia would actually have more Pitch health. The so, uh, the three times is actually there relevant there. Three times with the Cresselia goes for a nice little tiny bit of damage to the Scizor. That Thunderous used to be. Hits the Scizor for not very effective damage, just a little bit of... Uh, and Thunderbolt comes there. out no para into the... Did she double? Or did he double? No, he doesn't hit the Weavile. Starting to target the Weavile. So that's good because Weavile's now in Mach Punch range. Because it was, was most likely Focus Ash. Over half, and I mean, Taunt is gone. So now Brendan's off. gotta be a be little be scared. Because Cresselia can very easily go down here. Yeah. The two... She's positioned really well because she has two Pokemon that threaten damage on the Cresselia. The one thing is that... But uh, beat up or uh, Weavile's attack would go first and hit the Cresselia before um, it would hit Cresselia with uh, beat up before uh, Scissors bug bite. So you wouldn't be able to eat the berry first in that case, but you'd really still do a lot of damage and uh, probably kill Cresselia. Weevil, that's something we usually see, but it may, it probably explains why the Verizian's there. It has the ability that to also explains the ice shard play earlier. Its attack whenever it's hit by a dark type move. So. We're learning opinion. quite a bit of uh, important information about Fuko's team, even though... I want, but Brendan's already locked in. This is a tough position. Like, if you're Brendan, do you switch? Because you could switch to Conkledr, in theory. Um, You could switch to Conkledr, expecting Dark Move and Bug Move. But if they you get it with Ice Move and, and and they Bug Move your Rotom, for example, you could be in trouble. The other option is Steel Resist Dark this game. So, like, Heatran is such a free switch in here Help that it Brendan seems super obvious. So maybe, what he wants to do, in do you series. bring it in? Do you have it yeah, in this matchup? Do you have a Scavalier? Like a lot of the Pokemon in the back, again, you know, resist these typings. And we've um, talked about this all weekend. About and saving Cresselia is kind of important, but yeah, like it's, it's tough because you opponent, if you get red, you could be in back, like these Pokemon, Cresselia and Rotom aren't no like you saw. Weevil is not even bulky, and Rotom's Thunderbolt isn't even a two hit KO on it. It looks like, and so. Like, you have to be really careful with how you bring your sweepers in, because if you bring in the sweeper and it takes too much damage, you might just not have enough offense to win yeah, the game. So, it's really actually very tricky. And there's no ally switch this game. Because he doesn't learn ally switch. Only be key ready. Uh, but maybe switch is Cresselia out. I mean, you had a safe switch to Heatran. You had a pretty safe switch to Conkledr. Scavalier. Ooh, a Scavalier also is a good switch. That's a super smart switch, because it resists everything. Everything is... It resists ice, it resists dark, it resists bug, and it resists steel. happy to stand up against that Weavile and that Scizor. Which is cool. The two bug steel types out on the field here. And the beat-up is going to target Rotom. Is going to do much better damage than to that s Ooh, she predicted it. But still not that great. Yeah, I mean... You know, not chosen over the... Let's see who started with Bug Bite. The Night Slash... Bug Gem. Oh my god, it's Bug Gem's Lower damage output. But the Bug Gem, Bug Bite from Scizor. What used to be Cresselia, now a Scavalier, is going to deal about 50 damage there. Not enough to so make that that's the underway. think twice about switching in while Rotom is fully paralyzed and unable So now to move. the momentum feels like it was sh it's shifted. So far, Brendan felt like he was in control, but now he's taking a lot of damage. Um, and Rotom is, you know, looking like it's going to get KO'd soon. And, um, you know, you're still paralyzed. Scissor's a real problem for Brendan. Scissor feels like a real problem for him right now because three of his Pokemon can't really do much to it. Rotom can burn it, but it, Fuga made a smart decision and invested in a Thunder Wave on the Rotom. Which is paying off already because first of all it's paralyzed, second of all scissor now it speeds it, and it also just makes Willow Will Wisp even more inconsistent. So if you're Brendan here, like you probably use your Escavalier to X Scissor or Iron Head the Weavile, but what do you do with Rotom? Do you switch? Do you stay uh, in? Get some nice damage there. I uh, gets. Oh, this this, bug, this, this bug scissor is such a still, problem. Uh, you also might not even want to hit the, the scissor turn, because you can always go Conk and Mach Punch. Conkleder and Weavile are in range of Mach Punch. And the choice with Megahorn is going to do a lot of damage to Scissor. So you could, in theory, just launch a Megahorn here. Because you're not really under pressure. Like, Escavalier is not under pressure from anything. 
Um, but yeah, that, yeah, that, that's a good way of putting it. It was free damage. Very... That's yeah, free. That was that's a great way of putting it from Evan. He says it's, it, it got a lot of free damage, and it's right. She got that damage off on a Scavalier and Rotom, and she lost nothing very for important. it. Especially with that Thunderous sitting in the back. Uh, so that see. Ice Beam will be important to check the Thunderous if it ever decides to come back in. But that Escavalier this looks like a rough position. so much pressure on the Puko right now. 13 minutes yeah, left, almost two. at the halfway point. Even though Escavalier is going to take much damage from Scissor, it's not going to do a whole lot back either. But those two Pokemon comes out again, Brennan doesn't switch. Of, uh, dealing with the other two. Yeah, and Weavile Bop. continues to beat Bop. up on poor Bop. Rotom. Going Rotom should go down this turn. Fugo most likely doubled it. Bugbite comes out, this should be a Rotom. As Bugbite does come out from the Scissor to finish off that Rotom. Is going to be able to get the KO so, there Brandon's with the critical Pokemon lead. Now. Just gravy on top of that one. As Escavalier Crazy. and Weavile are going to... Oh, and it steals the Chesto Berry. Really great information Megalon comes out and misses. for Fuko. And the so, Brendan Zhang, back against the wall. He's down a Pokemon. He's had two turns in a row where he got nothing. He literally got no damage off for two consecutive turns. How is he going to come back from this? He's locked himself into Megahorn, which misses. He actually might have gone for rest with his Rotom the turn that he was full paralyzed. I forgot that he had a rest, which would have healed him back to full and um, over in the paralysis. So next turn, he could will us the scissor, which probably would have won in the game. So he goes for a Megahorn and he misses. He's lost his Rotom and his Cresselia is, again, threatened by both of these Pokemon and has some damage on it. Um, you really don't want to go Cresselia oh boy, here. So Megahorn missing. That How is he going to keep us cool? And How is he going to make sure that he's still... We're seeing both of the bug steals fighting each other Oh, he goes in quickly. He goes in the So Down a Pokemon, but not out. Thunderous is really damaged. We battles in Rock Pitch range. Um, the Scissor is a problem, though, and it might have Acrobatics. I don't remember. Um, which probably got Protect, Bug Bite, Bullet Punch, and then the Coverage move, which or a Swords Dance. Um, Superpower, Acrobatics, or Swords Dance. Normally, Acrobatics are in Flying Gem, though, so he's probably not Acrobatic, or she's probably not Acrobatics, but... Yeah, it's 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 tough. You know, he's gotten two turns where he got nothing out of it, and you know, you can see he's emotional. He's really like he's really invested in the match. So he's got to find a way to not tilt and to stay present. Teams, and one of the advantages Scissor has is that Bug Bite is 100% accurate, but clearly Megahorn is not. Yeah, yeah. Megahorn is not. Megahorn, not the most. So what do you do here? The, the game, obvious uh, play is Mock Punch the Weavile and Megahorn, the either the Weavile the or the Scissor. The, field now, um, the other option though is you can make a read here because you need damage on the Scissor, and frankly, like he's running out of. Pokemon that can do it. Like, he has to get damage on Caesar with Conkleder and a Scavalier because otherwise, like, what is he going to do? Right? Like, how, like, you know, like, he needs to, he needs to get rid of Caesar somehow so he can win with Cresselia and Trick Room. And, um, he also has, you know, like I said, Fuku has two Pokemon that are in Mock Punch range. So if Caesar goes down, there's, then both Thunderous and Weavile are Mock Punch targets and neither have Protect. So, that Caesar isn't carrying any sort of flying. This isn't attack. like, he, yeah, the, the other advantage really that Caesar has is the priority of Bullet back. Punch, but it's the priority I like it actually even over Heatran. Mock Punch that's probably going to be making the play here. Ice Punch comes out, so she reads the no, um, she reads yep, the no Weavile Mock Punch. He's just going to go for an Ice Punch. Brandon's going for a Drain Punch. much damage as possible. He gets frozen. And gets the freeze onto Kinkelder. But he Kelder pops off because he's a Lumberry. Solid, <laughs> but the Lumberry comes out from Kinkelder. <laughs> Shaking his head. That is scary, though, the because freeze. now he... Oh, does Aerial Ace? not get frozen, but does take an but Aerial Ace from Scizor. Has that flying move in its back pocket. And it is going to barely pops off. miss Oh, that's a KO. big pop off. Drain Punch HP, comes out. But the Drain Punch comes out from Kinkelder. Okay, Kinkelder's so Fuku doesn't have Protect. We've seen all of her moves now. Same type boosted drain. Oh, punch, it's a lot of damage. Iron Fist, ability Iron Fist is deal stupid. A whole heck of a lot of damage and heal off some of the and damage. And he's probably out of ice shard range too. Megahorn comes and out. Megahorn comes fingers out crossed. And it's Caesar. Does okay, that's a resistant hit, but I think Caesar it's gonna kill. This turn. Okay. <laughs> I really <laughs> agree with that play from Brandon. So the Lumberry like might not look like a big deal. Like the freeze might not look like a big deal. But now Fuku can go into Thunderous and Thunder Wave, and you know one fourth of the time. Very bad position. That's an important knockout there. We just saw Aerial One fourth of the time, Brendan safe. probably loses the With game. With that off the field, uh, Kinkelder's going to have a much easier time this. trying thunder, to help clean up this Man, game, especially so uh, threatening the okay, it's not. Uh, twice week to fighting Ooh, okay. Weevil with uh, Mach Punch. So, Brendan actually is in an interesting spot here. He probably wants to Mach Punch the Weavile um, because it's a guaranteed KO. Um, but the problem is, I'm not sure, like, who would win between, like, if it's Hydro and Polytoad and if it one shot to Scavalier, or if it's Water and Polytoad and it one shot to Scavalier... The situation gets really kind of ugly really fast because, like, let's say you trade, you know, Thunderous for, um, you trade, you trade Weavile for a Scavalier here, like, let's say Fuko just Hydro Pumps a Scavalier and KOs it, then Thunderous comes in and Cresselia comes in and then Thunderous taunts 
um, Chrysalia, and Chrysalia only has Ice Beam. So yeah, and that lump. I don't know if you're Brendan and how you feel about this one. You might need to survive a hit. You might just you could switch to Chrysalia now. Actually, turn. I think that's that might be what you have to do. Very bad for switch to Chrysalia and yeah, he would not have gotten the knockout because or make a read. Like basically, Fuku can only attack either Escavalier or Conkleder. So. If, if Fuko thinks that Brendan is going to Megahorn Politoed, then she's going to uh, water attack into Escavalier. And if she thinks that Brendan is going to switch, then she's going to water attack into Plumberry. And that's so, why you use it. You know, yeah. it's a great Rock Punch item, KOs both kind of Thunderous and Vile, so it's wrong. kind of just the An important part right of now. getting deep in a tournament like this is that you've got to mitigate the luck factors of the game. You know, there's always probability like misses and freezes. And you've got to do what you can to make sure those bounces go in your favor. And Lumberry helps make that happen. Yeah, for my strong. money, Lumberry is probably Okay, she's, one of he the switches. I, I really agree with that play. It on your team, you'd better have a very good reason why. The Megahorn Escalier is so threatening that I think Fuku has to respect it. Comes out on the field, like, basically, Brendan just needs to make sure he gets through this Pokemon with the po without losing Conkleder. Oh, he attacks. He covers both options. Detect, <gasps> Wait, that was so smart. Oh, my God. That was such a good play. Okay, so, so like I was saying, it felt like a 50-50, right? Brendan can go for Mach Punch and KO the Weavile. Um, and then Fuku has to choose between hitting... A Scavalier with with um, a water move, or um, or Conkleder with a water move, and Brendan says, "You know what? Actually, I don't have to make this a 50-50. I can make this a 100-0 by detecting. Because as long as Cresselia isn't KO'd, um, what Brendan can do is he can mock punch Weavile this turn, right? Or he detects this turn, switches in. Let's say Cresselia is not in range of Polychoid at the end of the turn, and since he's still a Citrus Berry, and he knows that Fuko's probably not going to beat up his Cresselia." He knows there's a very good chance that he can still be in a good position at the end of this turn. So, he brings in Cresselia, detects Conkleder, and now this turn, he can mock punch the Weavile and Trick Room. And as long as Trick Room goes up, Escavalier should Please win, because he can Helping Hand, turn, Excisor, um, he can um, Ice Beam, or he can Sunny Day. From any damage ice Punch comes out as the ice punch into Conk. She doesn't, into the uh, she doesn't respect Mock Punch. And and skull, skull comes out as a Water Jam. Oh my well. god, I would if I was a junior right now, even with my current brand, I would have lost that. I super would have Mock Punch, and then lost. And not only does he get Man, gems are broken. Gems don't activate if they protect. That's so broken. <laughs> Why do they let us do that? Yeah, yeah and now he's in an amazing spot. That was a great play. That was such a good play. Like, if you were watching this gameplay, you wouldn't be like, oh, this is a juniors match. You'd be like, yeah, this is like World Championships, Masters, Finals. The of Cresselia putting Trick Room up. This is an amazing so final. it is dangerous. So Kinkelder might get a, a turn here, even though it probably shouldn't. Yeah, and as we see, Brendan having Cresselia, Kinkelder, and Escavalier. Um, I have to imagine that Cresselia is looking to twist the dimensions. Yeah, I mean, it's a great Trick Room mode. Two of the yeah, Fuku's kind of pinned here. Physical I'll talk Pokemon. this. So, getting Trick Room up would give him a big advantage if he's able to do it. Yeah, here. if Trick Room goes up, Brennan yeah, probably just wins, and I don't see how Fuka stops it. Like, she, she can't even Ice Shard into the um, Cresselia, so because if she Ice Shards the Cresselia, the Citrus Berry just activates it, and Brennan ends up with more health than he started. So, she probably has to hope that he misplays, honestly, that he doesn't walk punch or that he doesn't have it, but. Um, yeah, yeah, absolutely. I also yeah. really respect that Fuku is taking her full time every turn. He's gonna have a hard time with actually, yeah, actually, I like this because if Ice Shard crits the Conkleder, she can win. So I, that was the right play. That was 100% the right play. 60 down to 21, okay. Brendan pops off. Kelder does survive the Ice Punch and gets the Mock Punch off and is going to KO that KO the Weavile. Now he's in good shape. Now he's in gets really the KO good shape. There, leaving Politoed and Thunderous against Escavalier. Kelder now Thunder Wave still... Ooh, the, the Parasong. Song comes out from Politoed. Oh, and now is the time when you're grateful you have... Um, have grateful you have... Um, protect on Escavalier because I can actually end up mattering. So... Brennan actually has a safe win condition here. I think he can detect an Ice Beam with his Cresselia and then switch into Scavalier and then win the game that way. But he also can just win the game by attacking most likely. Um, and that's kind of like an advanced... He probably wasn't expecting the Paris song there. I actually really like Fuka's play because what, what she says is, you know, um, if... Like, if Ice Shard crits Conkleder and it goes down, then it's a, then you get Paris song, Apollo and on Cresselia. And that means that all you would need to do is, in theory, like... Taunt the Cresselia and then scald the Escavalier, and then as long as Politoed survived to Mega or dodged a Megahorn or you know survived a Helping Hand X Scissor, which I don't think it does, but like it's still a good play regardless. Um, because you could also swagger the Escavalier if you wanted. Um, but yeah, basically in that situation, you could win. So I think that an interesting move there. Um, it wasn't a bad play at all. Yeah. I think it was a cool play. Like, because if you, again, if you KO Conkled or you just let Escavalier get in for free, and um, it's gonna be hard for you to beat. A Scavalier at that point, and so I mean I don't know. Maybe you could have catered Conkleder and going and getting a Scavalier in. But I don't know. Stuck. Yeah, Politoed sacrificing. Wait, actually, I think the way what Fuku needed to do to win there is she actually needs to sack Thunderous that turn. Wait, she could have won this I think if she made a really advanced, like really complicated play where she switches Weavile to Thunderous, dies to Mock Punch, scalds Conkleder for the KO, goes Weavile again, 
fake out into a scavalier and then scald into a scavalier and then ice shard for the ko so i think i think this was winnable for her this is winnable for her but like that's such a hard call to make with a very short timer and a lot of pressure so and also brendan could have like done something different there right he could have um he goes switch to a scavalier which totally invalidates that so well partially invalidates that by palatode there Knowing that oh, I forgot Thunders was paralyzed. Wait a second, well, it's actually it slower than Cresselia. It might even be slower than Conkeldur. I forgot about that. Uh, I forgot about the paralysis. So maybe that, maybe that. Has to risk getting stalled out and you know losing Pokemon to Parasong or switching a whole bunch of times, which gives her some opportunities to attack, yeah. even though she's behind. Huh. Yeah, definitely an interesting play. This is a weird turn. I mean, Brendan should probably just Pokemon help again Mock Punch here into Thunderous, or maybe Mock Punch Ice Punch just cover the options. But let's see. Still a threat now that Trick Room is up. And I don't know if Mock Punch KOs, so maybe you Drain Punch Thunderous, Thunder although I don't think you want to get Thunderbolted. Yeah, I mean, Thunder is still you have to bring, I don't know. moves like Thunder Wave, which we've seen the power I think of, if you're Fuku, uh, you weekend. start swaggering. <laughs> uh, even though there's only a small chance of being fully paralyzed, it always seems to come up at just the wrong moment, so Brendan's going to want to do everything he can to avoid uh, introducing that element. And Actually, I still like the Parasong play, because ability. all yeah. Polyjo needs to do is beat the Escavalier somehow, so it's not impossible. And if you waste a single also, I like Parasong. Let's go. Yeah, it's one of the best moves because it's versatile. Not Calm only detects, okay. That, you know, I agree. You, he, Brendan's thinking about the, that he can win with Trick Room as long as Thunderous goes down. He also does not want to get swaggered at Thunder Wave. Taunt comes out, okay. Right here. The taunt comes out on Interesting. A little bit late, too late to stop that Trick Room. Uh, but Probably doesn't want Sunny Day going up, but Brendan's most likely just Ice Beaming here. Yeah, just Ice Beams and this is actually guaranteed over because he has Protect on his Cavalier. And no matter what happens, he can always, Thunderous like next turn, he can always go if Scavalier or Conk dies, and then and he can, um, he can just protect Politoed, and win. Who only has three turns anyway Skull comes up to Conk, yeah, I mean, I agree with how Fuka's playing. Let's go, Aaron! There's Angel. And the Parish counts falling to two. There's, I think that was, I think that was both Wii. Yeah, 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 game one looks really good for Brendan here. He's got three Pokemon left, and all he has to do is not lose all of them before two turns pass. Yeah. <laughs> I, I also would have said helping hand this turn. My brain told me helping hand. Yeah, so Paris Lung ends up backfiring, but I, I respect yeah, the gambit. Yeah, I also respect the switch there. KO all three Pokemon on the field. Uh, I wonder if she's water gem. I would personally like, like to know, although it might be Citrus Berry Priscilla based on this. Is going to switch out for a Scavalier. Does not want to... Scavalier, to world champion. Uh, at in the Man, Iron Fist is so strong. I forgot how strong Iron Fist was. Thanks to that trick room. Does get the drain punch off. And it's going to deal a whole heck of That's a lot of damage. Half there and I, I forgot how strong Conkeldur was. Getting it back it's up not even Hammer Arm. Imagine Life of Hammer Arm. Is it Citrus? Okay, it's Citrus. Okay, cool. As is not Water Jam. Okay, so maybe the ending game is a little different. I kind of assumed it was an offensive Politoed, but it looks like it's defensive. Scald comes out. This should take out Conkeldonk. for recovering off those da that damage there. The Scald comes out onto Conkeldur. And with the rain, with the water type boost there, oh, oh wow, does not quite get the KO. Conkeldur, this end game was slightly messier for Brendan than it should have been, just because his lumberry got burned. Punch, so like that's like if he if his lumberry wasn't burned, he could have just that's safely ice beamed and so drain punched into play the. Now uh, is it really the strong? One of the most powerful and physical although, attackers in the game, but you do have the option I of really using moves like drain punch, which lets him heal and be really bulky as well. What she was going for, I think, is that if Polyjo is able to Oko a Scavalier. Then what happens? Like let's say let's say Brendan doesn't detect that turn and instead he like attacks into, um, attacks into Thunderous with with Conkeldur, like made the play that I suggested, which was Mock Punch Ice Punch. Then Cresselia gets taunted, um, Polly did Scald KOs Conkeldur, and now Scavalier comes in with two turns left to Parasong, uh, and three turns left to Trick Room, and so she taunted to make sure that Brendan couldn't reverse the Trick Room, which meant that if Polly did, was able to KO Scavalier, she would have just won on Parish Song timer. Like she would have she had one chance to Scald and to have Polly survive. Uh, maybe Brendan misses a Mega Horn. Maybe oh, she doesn't know about a Scissor. Uh, rather than Hammer, um, like we saw in Masters yesterday, but yeah. which is just focused on the offense. So it was—it was actually a really smart, really like multi-level play. Going to go down easy. Switches out for Cresselia, who is going to be back on the field now. So let's see, Brendan. I mean, this game is over. Is There's no way for that parish. He does reveal Exorcism. I think actually, this situation, if, she, if he already revealed it in the earlier set, I think it's fine. But otherwise, Escavalier maybe Megahorn is better. So but he does. Damage. Oh, it survives. Polito just barely hangs. But helping out Exorcism would have cared. So Brendan was safe anyway. But let's see. I don't think Scald will KO based on how much she did to Conkeldur. She wouldn't need to crit basically. But you know, that's not. No, that's not terrible. That's weak. Is Queen there? Oh, wait. Uh, horse mask. Uh, decisive victory for Brendan there. He finishes the game with a three Pokemon. No advantage. smiles. Brendan's zoned and in. Okay, so if you're Brendan, we had before that a big part of the. Fun. You got to be feeling pretty good about that. Um, you know, it was you got a little unlucky. You missed that, those middle turns where you missed a Mega Horn. You got full Parrot and you got Ice Punch Frozen. That probably stressed him out a lot. 
question is, can he maintain composure? You know, he has one game left and the pressure's really on now. He knows he's one game away from being the world champion, but he also knows that he can lose. So, I don't know. Finals is I don't know. I think if you're Brendan, you feel like, in general, Jim, which... like the early game went well for him, of course, but it's also kind of like, I don't know, like he made a read in a sense because like turn one, he knew that he was going to get taunted. You get Although that, that was a pretty game, safe read, so I don't know. I guess you don't feel too bad about it. When you win by a big deficit like that, it makes it that much harder to battle back. Yeah, definitely. There was a whole bunch of information gleaned from both these trainers also. They already played in Swiss, but we got to see, uh, well, we got to see because he tried to use it, the helping hand on Cresselia. We also saw the Parish song from Politoed. Yeah, Parish song Politoed's uh, really cool there. The whole mess tricks that got these players to the finals uh, came out in that last game because they can't hide anything now. <laughs> like, no, no need now, right? Yeah. You gotta this leave it all on the game. table. Uh, one thing I thought was really interesting we did see in that last turn was that uh, Eskevel oh, was both Excisor and Megahorn. Uh, we mentioned before with Lumberry yeah, that I agree. a lot of things in Brendan's team seemed to indicate that you know, he was doing whatever he could to put the odds in his favor. He wasn't taking more chances than he needed I'm to. And Excisor is an interesting way to do that. I uh, using two bug moves. Or two moves yeah, no, the double bug move is really smart. Really I, like, really that's a big, that's something I talked about earlier. Is the double bug move is like kind of a big deal. It's really, it's like. Not a Pokemon that's known well, let's for see what he's probably cover it. By any stretch of the imagination. So rather than using what Wait, hang on, what did he say? That's known for it's your versatility, but he's traded versatility for accuracy here. A Skevalier, not a Pokemon that's known for its diverse move pool. By Which is funny because now it actually has really good move pool. It has knock off and ground drill run. Third move options you can have. That's actually really funny because now it is known. Usually Iron Head and Protect. He's going with X Scissor, so he has a bug move that he knows will always hit. And I think that's a really good strategy if you want to make sure that you're not you know, putting the your, your fate in the game's hands. You know, you want to keep things under oh, control. Oh, so I didn't realize she had Kingdra. Oh, you know, wow, that's like scary. Although I guess Brendan has like Trick Room. And yeah, as we saw like, Fugo needs to lead with Thunderous here. If she doesn't lead with Thunderous, and then and Brendan will just get Trick Room up. Unless beat up plus, like, Verzion Weavile's the other lead, but Brendan said he beat that in Swiss, so yeah. Game two. The finals here. Yeah, Kingdra, I don't believe, comes here. Right back into the game. You can see uh, sunny day, yeah, no way. Right here on your screen. And That's it's funny because you can kind of see that, like, the, the things that Brendan made, the calls that he Weavile made, like the Lumberry for status, and, um, and Sunny Day and Griselia for, for rain, are already, like, they're really, they're very Brandon relevant Griselia here in the finals, right? And I think it's cool. Game two of the 2013 Junior World Video Game Championships. Brendan Zhang at the bottom of your screen is up 1-0. Fuko Nakamichi hoping to come back in this second game of a potential three-game set. We'll be on the top of your screen. Okay, same lead. Leads Probably same lead from Brendan as well. He doesn't really have anything better. Everything was right about that lead. All right, Rotom, like Cresselia again. Agrees. <laughs> My lead was just as good. Cresselia and Rotom washing machine back on the field. I'm always a little surprised to see the same leads from the losing trainer, especially when a deficit was big like that. But perhaps she thinks she has a different plan this time. Uh, even though she's using the same Pokemon, maybe she'll differentiate her strategy a little bit. Uh, we only saw a few moves from both of these Pokemon last game, so there's still more tricks she might have that could improve this matchup for her a little bit. We saw the moves from Weavile, but and we, and I think we know the moves from Thunder as well, because I've been talking about Swagger. A lot of Thunder Wave, Taunt, Thunderbolt, and Swagger, unless she doesn't have Thunderbolt, but so she it probably is does. Possible that if Fuko is able to play her cards right this ter this time around, she will still be able to come out on top. And we haven't seen the, the back Pokemon, too. She could still have cha made changes back there. And so could That's Brendan, true, yeah. Just because you're leading the same doesn't uh, necessarily mean you're doing the same thing. So if Fago comes out into Rotom, there should, should be the same sure turn one, I think. Washing machine cannot, oh, never mind. Cannot We're playing this with turn. Swagger. As Swagger comes out from Thunderous Incarnate onto that Cresselia. Swagger, uh, actually, a move that okay, we saw so quite a bit of yesterday. You guys have no idea how broken Swagger was. If you didn't play back in the day, you have no idea what we dealt with. Um, so I actually like that play from Fugo. She says, all right, well, first of all, I think you're going to Ice Beam. And even if you go for Trick Room, you only have a 50% chance of it working. So enjoy your Swagger. <laughs> oh, boy, Swagger. And it was 90% accurate, too. Rotom flinch? Is, okay, just because I get the tag off. To move, thanks to that fake out She's probably going to Thunder Wave at this turn. Is confused and is going to use okay. the ice beam. So he gets the ice beam off, which is good, but he doesn't get the off, which is good. It's a good play from Fuko. I, I actually think it's kind of her best move unless she wanted to Thunder Wave, but uh, just a little I think bit Swagger's actually the best move there. When you're going up against a Pokemon like Thunderous, that's going to just try and no paralyze freeze, okay. you and confuse you. Every little bit of damage counts. Swagger. Yeah, and oh my getting God. rid of the berry is important, too. You know, then every ice beam after this one will do more damage. Yeah, and it also sets Brendan up for a nice punch conqueror, which will KO now, most likely, because of the Iron Fist. I do hope that Brendan... If you want to deal with Thunderous, I think it's important for him to do what he did the first it's game. It's sore to get rid of Thunderous when he does stuff like rather this. Rather than just slowly whittling it down. Uh, that was kind of the pitfall his brother ran into. Mm -hmm. And apparently Thunderwave Swagger is the patented anti-Zang tactic. So yeah, hopefully Brendan can figure a way around it.
They're yeah, ripping on Aaron. <laughs> they're not really ripping, but they're, it's, it's, uh, it's a big part, part of this narrative. In the back with Which, I mean, it makes Kelder sense. Like nothing more than to eat a swagger and activate that lumberry to cure the confusion. And get so if you're Brendan here, I mean, I think you will really list maybe the Robo the Weavile right getting a burn off and go for Trick Room or you Ice Beam again. Risky or you double the Thunderous. I don't know. I feel like Fuku's going to go for another. Ooh. I think it's really clever of him to have that tool available. A Scavely Kong. No way. Wait Possibly a second, Brendan. Did she swagger? There's no way she swaggered, Kelder. right? Wait, okay, she's going for Trick Room this turn, so I really like that play. He's expecting beat up Kelder into his Rotom or his Cresselia. He gets the beat up call correct, yeah. And Thunderous didn't go for a Taunt or anything else. Oh, so, big crit. That's a big crit. He is going for Trick Room, so we know that Thunderous is going for Thunderbolt here. Probably Rotom. Probably Rotom's the target. He sees an opportunity like to get his Conqueror in safely, and he goes for it. And I super respect that. Times that it hit. Thun and thunder, thunder but it misses Conk. Okay, that was scary. Conk takes the Thunder there, and it's kind of trouble. Swagger, but Especially if Trick Room doesn't go up. Any damage this turn. Cresselia trying to fight through that confusion. Okay, yeah, 50%. This if he gets Trick Room up there, he probably himself. wins. But now, damage, but more now he's in range of beat up plus plus Thunder. But or or Shinus Taunt as well. It doesn't work out this time, but. It does have a Palatoad on the team, which makes the Thunder 100% accurate, so it makes sense that it has it rather than a move like Thunder. <laughs> has another chance to set up. I knew I saw Wii. There he is. A little risky for now. <laughs> and there is Aaron, Aaron Zhang, uh, Brendan's older brother on the screen just a second ago, uh, cheering on his little brother in this finals. <laughs> Kelder oh, out on the field me. now. Doesn't take any status moves, actually. Now still has the Lumber and is going to put a Lumber Iron Fist Conk is actually so cool, because normally it's Guts, obviously. It or not this format, but like, yeah, I don't it's know. It's a little riskier for Thunder. It kind of gets the benefit of both. Now, uh, we've like, not the benefit, but at least like, it's true status. Even if it gets status, it still probably doesn't want to hang around here and avoid risk getting knocked out here, because I think that So in this situation, I think you probably... Uh, Drain push the Weavile and the Rice Push the Thunderous. So losing um, Thunderous early can make it really difficult here. to battle Cresselia back. actually switches. Yeah, definitely a great way to pressure that Thunderous. Rotom sure maybe? Or Scavalier. Okay, Rotom was back in. I, I super agree with that. In this situation, I think you... Brendan's team just having that offense. I don't know. Either one makes lumberry. sense. A uh, great adjustment there. Rotom comes Thunder back wave out oh God. Thunder Wave comes out from the Thunderous. She is doesn't going care about the Lumberry. The but it will give Conkeldor... This is probably beat up into Rotom then. ...if it chooses to take it. So you if you're Brendan, coming out and the being I think you probably want to ice punch again, the, the Thunderous here. Money, you don't want it spreading more status. Item in the game just because he, he resists the, the confusion as well. Beat up comes out. Yeah, I agree with that because it probably would have KO'd the, the Cresselia anyway. Going to deal and just a lot of damage. Rotom, but as we saw before, yeah, I should do that much damage. Not the strongest attack. Uh, mostly. Okay, okay, okay. Should get rid of Thunderous here. So ice punch earlier when he breaks the Archie Berry is really important for this turn. I don't know if it's going to KO. It's going to be close. It looks like it okay. will be. It goes down. That's really big. Because as you can see, like the the status is so difficult for Brendan to deal with. So getting rid of it is kind of a big deal. Yeah, we're just talking about how important of a knockout that would be for him to get, and he's able to. And now so. Fuku's kind of in not great shape because, like, of course she wants to go Scizor or she wants to go into I don't know, um, uh, like Politoed, assuming the same Pokemon in the back. But you can't really KO Conkler easily, and Conkler can like just Drain Punch Weavile and heal a lot. And if you go Scissor, Rotom's going to Will-O-Wisp you. Uh, and if you go Politoed, Rotom's going to Thunderbolt you. And you still can't rid of, get rid of Conkleder because we know you're Citrus Berry. So, Brendan, the switch out earlier of switching his Rotom into Conkleder and then pushing it back in as he KOs Thunderous was so smart because now Rotom's not paralyzed, which is a huge difference from the, difference from no the last game. And by KOing, I think it's Politoed. Both of which still have um, a health left. So they're going to be big for the rest so by of the KOing the Thunderous, you've also weakened really Beat Up's power, which is a big deal. So now you definitely won't get KO'd by Beat Up, uh, even if one of the hits crits most likely. Although we're doing double damage. No, I don't think so. I don't think it will KO. The Pokemon in, uh, Parish Song loses quite a bit of its utility. So uh, Brendan's in an amazing utility, spot right now. He can Drain Punch the Thunderbolt, and there's almost nothing Fuku can do to stop it. You still have remaining She can burn him with Skull. Maybe that's why she Thunder Wave. Not only for the small burn, because that one, I mean, we will still go down to Sash, but it would really significantly damage, or you know. Dampen yeah, the, the damage output of Conkleder, but yeah, she just protects here. In the back. I agree with that. She's probably going for Beat Up into Rotom. Protecting itself does not want to be the target of any damage here. As beat Up comes out, it should be Rotom. It should be Thunderbolt into Politoed and then Drain Punch into the E. Well, it's only nine damage. Correctly identifying that Rotom's biggest threat to Politoed right now. Even if two of them could have been shooting would have lived. That electric typing going to be super effective. Rotom's rest actually. Whoa, that was a good read. That was a really good read from Brendan. Nap time. That was really good. So now he's back to full HP. 
Um, a really great move and, there. And, you know, he can't even get Barry bug bitten because he's in himself. To be hit by electric type attacks. That's a and big move. And you move as intelligently as he could there and heals up. But and Rotom, like, I, if you remember from the team report, Brendan made his Rotom super bulky. And so this just, like... Brandon seemed looked like it needed trick him up to win, but he doesn't Especially even. You can see here he's just so bulky and he's healing and with the Dream Punch time. and Rest. It's really difficult that, yeah, to knock it out. It's like, yeah, and there Ooh, is that Chesterberry waking it back up. As I wonder does actually, try I wonder to get why. the damage done That's a little bit of an Polytoad interesting play. Uh, but I guess this so, true, you can Thunderbolt Dream Punch with Polytoad safely. More importantly, Rotom is healthy. Actually, I like that play because, like, assuming that Polytoad doesn't protect itself, then. Like if Polyjuice protects itself, then you end the turn with full HP more or less, and unless he unless she ice punches into Conkleder, and if Polyjuice does protect, then you end up in this situation where like the worst thing that happens is you know you took an ice punch. You can always mock punch Weavile to bring it down to Sash if you want, um, and if Polyjuice attacks with Scald, assuming you don't get burned, you can Drain Punch for as we saw it did like fifty percent. Um, and if you do get burned, like pretty much Polyjuice at seventy five percent anyway, and that well, might be enough for mock punch Thunder Pulse. So yeah. Brandon's probably a little bit happier there since. In addition to not taking any damage, he healed a bunch off. Yeah, that was a really good turn for Brandon. Yeah, and still but I agree with Fuka's play as well. It's a good play. Like, with both Brandon's just playing kind of perfectly, and he's got such so threatening Pokemon, Pokemon that it's very difficult there. for Fuka to deal uh, with. So I think you, I do think you should drain like Punch Wheelie this turn and Thunderbolt Politoed. Yeah, really um, challenging if you're Fuka here. You've got to find a way to make a switch to get yourself in a better position. You still have Cresselia on the back of your set Pokemon fighting against counters. And well, can Kelder? I suppose comes out. There should be a double into the Conkleder. So. It would be funny if really he got frozen and then Skull thought him. With a very gutsy <laughs> but I don't think he gets frozen. Thunderbolt comes out. The this should maybe do uh, for me. Kinkelder isn't going to fight back. Gets the ice punch off as the Thunderbolt does connect with Politoed this time. Oh, like oh wow. Let's go Wolf 50. There. Exactly. Uh, but Politoed will just recover some of that back off with the But Drain Punch is going to do a lot to either of these Pokemon. As you can see, Politoed <laughs> becoming a little bit healthier there. And it looks like Skull comes out. Skull a burn here would be bad for Brandon. Polytoad. A burn here would be pretty bad. But again, if he, like, it's not even the end of the world. He can off of Dream Punch and Mock Punch. And he gets a Weavile. Ooh, that's big damage. So you can see it does not get the burn and burn. does not deal enough Okay, Dream Punch comes out into Politoed. I think it's interesting he's targeting down Politoed. And also heal off that Conkeldur. Politoed just barely hanging on with that red But actually, I think the reason he's doing it is his last Pokemon is most likely a Scavalier. And so he's not thinking like me, like an idiot like me. He's thinking about like, big brain like a genius, and he's saying, "All right, well, <clears throat> um, my last Pokemon's a Scavalier. I think your last Pokemon is Scizor. I resist all of your attacks except for Aerial Laser with my Scizor, and so as long as I get this Polyjuice gone, I don't, I don't even need like anything else. I just need to, you know, well, I can just win with my Scizor at that the point." Polyjuice with both of his attacks. I said that you used protecting the previous turn. It's I think you probably drain punch and Thunderbolt here. You so could detect if you wanted. There, Something really cool would be detect Conkleder and Thunderbolt into Weavile. Fuko's almost definitely going to protect here and ice punch the Conkleder. Sure Brennan's moving so fast. Like, every single turn he locks in, like, immediately. Polyjuke goes and protects, he pops off, and that either means he drained, he doubled the Weavile, or it means he detected his Conkleder. He mock punches, actually. Oh, that's so smart. That's so smart because... He says, all right, what if I get Critter frozen? No biggie, I'm just gonna, Mach like, I don't care about healing my health. I don't need to heal up. anymore. If Weavile goes down, then, um, then I can just Thunderbolt you whenever I want. So I'm gonna double you this turn, most likely, or I'm gonna make sure at least you go down to Sash. So I can go to Cresselia next, save my Scavalier. I mean, basically, it doesn't even, yeah. I don't know, there's so many ways to feel well for Brandon. So he's, he's looking now, he won't die to this unless he gets crit, but he could get crit or frozen. Does not get crit or frozen. And he doubles that slot, and that's very good for Brendan. Aaron, Aaron, oh, Aaron's so happy. Oh, my heart. Oh, that's so sweet. Because Aaron knows at this point that, of course, you can always lose Pokemon, but it's with how well Brendan's playing and the fact that it's basically a four versus one. That's like Absolutely amazing performance in this series. Yeah. Yeah, and Scizor out on the field now. Puko's last best hope against this. Man, I remember this music, the red HP music. We already saw that aerial ace this is a long video. <coughs> yeah, I mean, in this position, uh, Fuko probably goes uh, for the double protect. Yeah, if you're Brendan, for scissor here is that his I don't know, like, you can will the, so the, the scissor, if for you can Kelder, you detect the you have so, so many options here. here. Um, a it's burn on the scissor will definitely steal it, but I don't know if you want to risk it. Yeah, he's really thinking about it. You can see him going back and forth. This is one of the longest he's taken. It's still only, like, 30 seconds. Um, yeah, definitely the I think Caesar there, most likely bullet see, punches here. You can make that read. You can actually switch Conkleder out into your Escavalier. But I, it's kind of a, a needless Possibly play. Like, you don't need to do it. Turn here. Yeah. Uh, uh, it's the mark of a smart player to take your time on a turn like this. I think a lot of players make the mistake of rushing well. big decisions like this. 
but you know, this is your season. This is your chance at winning worlds. You've got to do everything you can to make sure you're making the best decision you can make. Conklin goes for detect. I agree with that. Paul Intune does not, not go for the double protect, interestingly enough. It. It wants to stick around with that Let's see if Rotom is faster than Caesar. That, uh, okay, okay, yeah. well, we don't find out. Bullet Punch comes out. I like that. I like that play a lot. Um, does protect itself Ooh. from the Bullet Punch. will does hit. That was a huge jump! Apparently, what? Trained an Aaron on your screen there. Does get the burn on the Wait, Scizor. wait, can we watch that? Wait, I deal with reduced attack as there. will does hit. Wait, how high did he jump? Dang. Kelder Sorry, we have to interrupt it. Protect How high did he jump? From the bullet punch. Okay, here. Will with Brandon shit. Aaron? How how high can he jump? How did he jump and not reveal any stomach? Wait, what? His shirt's coming up, but it's not he's still protecting himself. Alright, we'll go back to normal speed. But what? Oh, there's a nosh. <laughs> How high did he jump? Does hit. Brendan's Rotom apparently better trained than Aaron on your screen there. Let's <laughs> get the burn on to Scizor. Who will now have to deal Scald with into the Rotom, and you have to do it. Like, it's the right Holy play, you have to do it. But some back yeah, to it's Rotom. rough. That's a lot of damage. Is that a crit? Okay, okay, okay. okay, okay. Oh, it was like, critical hit. There we what go. a burn. I mean, the burn from the a crit there. burn is something. Uh, Burn does more damage this generation as well, but yeah. Back in this game. Uh, yeah, a big turn for her there. Um, ends up doing yeah. about triple the amount of damage she probably expected to do, but the burn on Scissor is a big deal. Yeah, With burn on Scissor is a huge deal. Probably seals it. So no, she, all all Brendan needs to do is get rid of this Politoed and he'll win. He also has the ability to rest again because it's not like. Can only survive. It's um, not like uh, uh, Polytoad and Scissor can do much damage to it now. Here. This is also permanent and, rain, by the yeah, way. The rain won't end. Much um, hit from anything, so it's not like you can solve the so rain turns, so but... Yeah, I mean, the I don't reduces know. Scissor's damage, which is going to make it even harder for them to come back unless you get some more critical hits, which ignore that. Bullet Punch comes out again. This should KO Conk, even though it's burned. Conk holder is super low health. Yeah, goodbye. But no protect from Polytoad and Brennan can just Thunderbolt, or you can hide your the Scissor, honestly. But those at least are Thunderbolt Scissor. He has so many options. Yeah, he makes the quick call, and now it's a 1 versus 3. And that's another source of the way, and it's going up to Fuku's score to bring it back home. Up to a 3-1 advantage for Brendan now. He only needs this game. He's up 1-0 in the series already. Yeah, this is, so this is really good for Brendan. Scissor, Honestly, you could rest here if you wanted, but I think you can just go with Scavalier. Down, like Thunderbolt champion. X Scissor or... Working at this for years. I don't know if Iron Head is better. In the last two years. I, Iron is stronger, but X Scissor is a higher crit rate. Does X Scissor have increased crit rate? Not by any. It should. He's in... A phenomenal position to take home his first Scissor will never be to Scavalier here. So with Brendan's position incredibly uh, correctly, incredibly intelligently, and so honestly, hats off. Like targeting down the Polytoad, realizing at once Thunderous went down, it was one of the two Pokemon that could beat as a Scavalier. So as smart. Well. The burn on the Scissor, the burn on the Rotom. Uh, really good position for Brendan, and you know he's been working at this as you said for years. Uh, you have to imagine that his hands are shaking. Hopefully, he's able to select the right moves. <laughs> Yeah, you've got to imagine, you can taste it now. Only one Pokemon on the other side, it's Burn. He's got a Scavalier out who usually wins that 1v1. <laughs> uh, he's got to be excited now. Especially Thunderbolt coming out, I agree. Don't bother going for Hydro Pump. Going to deal Just get the damage off. Thunderbolt plus Iron Head or X Scissor should do it. Aerial Ace is going to do like 22 damage. That's my prediction. Aerial Ace onto the Scavalier is going to deal a little bit of damage, but thanks to that Burn, not enough. The X Scissor comes out. He's smiling. Oh, he knows. It's going to deal an, not enough damage for the KO, but the burn damage. Oh, he's so happy. <laughs> oh, I feel like I'm going to cry. That's actually so sweet. Of the United States of takes his, oh, his hair is still long. Oh. <laughs> Let's go. Oh, he's so small. <laughs> he's so much taller now. Congratulations, oh. Brendan. That's amazing. You can see the commentators there. Oh, I pointed, but you can't see where I was pointing. You can see them in the background. Oh, let's go easy. I want to see if there's the interview. Oh, right. Is there an interview? What with an him? amazing match there. Brendan oh, let's watch the interview. <laughs> and then we'll end we'll the video. I'll move myself. Go over here, Wolf. You're banished. All right, everybody. And welcome back to the 2013 Pokemon World Video Game Championships here in Vancouver, Canada. I'm joined here Turn by Brendan Zhang, our newly crowned 2013 <laughs> Junior World <laughs> Champion. Brendan, it's been years in the making. How does it feel to finally take home the crown? 
oh man, it feels great. After losing like twice at the top four, you know, finally win. It's great. <laughs> yeah, twice in the top four, but finally getting into the finals. What was going through your head as you sat down on the big stage in front of this crowd, of this amazing crowd here in Canada? I was like, oh, if I lose, I mean, it's not that big of a deficit, but I would still like to win and, <laughs> you know, be crowned world champion. Of course. I, I think Let's that everyone Brendan. would like to be crowned world champion. Uh, Scott and I were talking about your games during, and we were incredibly impressed by the level of play. How do you feel that you will be prepared to take on the seniors division as I'm you graduate about this going one. forward? I'm actually more excited than juniors because um, seniors, there's a lot of more prediction and there's a lot more cool Pokemon. You know, in juniors, it's just like, okay. oh, it's kind of standard. Know. My brother gave me this, and he told me to play. <laughs> Speaking of, your brother, uh, Aaron Zhang, oh, played yesterday. This is so good. This is so good. Oh, my God. And you both had fairly similar teams. How much of the team building process is collaborative between you and Aaron? Um, actually, I built my own team. Uh, Aaron just gave me the Rotom Wash idea. <laughs> <laughs> and it looks like your team was maybe a little bit better than Aaron's. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go, Evan. I, I, have to, I have to ask, what is your uh, record against your brother? I don't know. Like, I win all the time, so. Spoken <laughs> <laughs> like a true champion. <laughs> oh, my God. So, you know, you're here in Vancouver, Canada. You just became the Pokemon world champion in your division. How are you celebrating? Uh, I think on Monday I'm going to go, like, with my family and celebrate in Vancouver. Nice. Have you had a chance to explore the city since you've been up here? Not yet. <laughs> that's a Pokemon tournament. Pokemon, right? <laughs> <laughs> All right, so moving forward into oh, nope. seniors, you say you're excited about it. Uh, do you envision your play style changing as you go forward, or are you, do you think you have a winning Imagine formula Imagine speaking already? to a 10-year-old kid about play style, and the kid like, is a genius and knows, like, like, probably has like a very, very like, in-depth understanding. I don't know. Like, like, if I were to go to a regular kid... Like like a regular junior? I don't know. Maybe I'm just underestimating juniors. I don't know if Brendan is just a genius or, like, if I just don't know enough about juniors. Because, like, I'm so confident that Brendan is going to give, a, like, a good answer here. I mean, I can't say I have a winning formula just because you can't really experience. He's not phased at all. He's not, like, Evan asked him a really difficult question about playstyle, which is a very abstract concept. And Brendan is, like, he knows exactly what he's talking about. Like, he, I don't know. It's, I think this is so cool. And until you are in the division. And that's a good answer as well, right? Because a lot of how you have to play depends on your opponent. So that's a very wise answer. Thank you, 10-year-old Brendan. But, I mean, I can't say that it's, like, my play style is going to be exactly the same. Like, I am going to adjust, but hopefully it's going to be well. Great. I look forward to seeing that. Great interview. Uh, so last question. Oh. Uh, we are, are seeing the new Pokemon XY games coming out. Have you decided who you're going to start with yet? Nope. <laughs> Make the decision on the spot? Yeah. All right. Let's go, Brendan. Well, thanks so much, Brendan, and congratulations. I'm so happy for you. And that's the story of how Brendan Zhang became the 2013 Pokemon World Champion in the Junior Division. So, um, I obviously am primarily going to be covering Masters Division matches, though there's actually at least one Senior Division, maybe two, that I definitely want to cover. Um, but I hope you guys found this interesting. Obviously, I'm super biased. Brendan's a good friend of mine, um, and so I've given you a very biased perspective on this match and on the backstory, but um, I hope I hope you found it interesting nonetheless, because I think this stuff, I think this match is just an amazing, amazing match. I think, I've, I've been hyping up Brendan the whole time, I'm, of course, but I think Fuko played very, very well as well. I think, like, there were, like, sometimes when you watch people who don't, like, I, I don't want to, like, rag on juniors, but, like, I'm not going to rag on juniors. I refuse. But, like, basically, like, like I said earlier, I don't think watching the match you would say, oh, this is a junior division match, right? Like, these, these, these plays what they were making, the game plans they were making, even the really interesting late game Parish song where at first I was kind of like, wait, that doesn't make sense. But then I, just, I thought more about it. I saw what she was going for. Like these are, this is very advanced Pokemon. And I don't think anyone would say otherwise. And I don't think it's the kind of Pokemon that most players would expect from kids who are 10 and under, right? 9, 10, 8, um, 8 years old. I don't know. I think, I think the fact that they're able to play so well, and you know, this is seven years ago almost at this point. So I don't know. I just think the whole thing is really interesting, and I like I like showcasing good Pokemon. I don't care who plays it necessarily, um, and so yeah, I think I think that's it. So I hope you enjoyed. I know that this is probably a match that not everyone who's watching this has seen. So um, I hope I hope that you enjoyed it. I hope you enjoyed my commentary on it. And um, if you have feedback for how I do these, let me know. I don't like obviously so far I've only covered Sajin in my own match, so or like World Finals. So I don't know if like I don't know if people will like me kind of going into ones that are less well less well known and stuff although this one most people should know um 
but yeah, I don't know. Let me know what you think of, of the whole series in general, because I enjoy doing it, and um, even though, honestly, it's really exhausting. Like, I, like, I'm so tired, but then again, it's been 80 minutes, so I guess that makes sense. Um, but yeah, let me know what you think, uh, any feedback you have, what other matches you'd like me to cover, and um, I think that's it. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you tomorrow for the next video. Goodbye.